This title bar here is called the lower third because it usually sits on the lower third of the screen. Let's see how we can create this in Premiere Pro. A lower third is usually when we display someone's name alongside their occupation. And the reason why it's called the lower third is because it usually sits on the lower third of the screen. So let's see how it's done. Say for example, we wanna add the title and occupation of Amanda to this clip here. So for that, what I'm gonna do is to get my type tool and then somewhere near the bottom left corner here, I'll just go and click because we'll make the adjustments later on to be a bit more precise. And because this was the first available video track for this title to go in, that's where it gets created. But if I undo this and then go back a little, then add the title here, you see it will go here because that's the first available track now. So to avoid this, what you can do is to go and lock the tracks that you don't want the title to go on to. So the V1 and V2 tracks. And now regardless of the position of the playhead, the title will be created on this track. So just to be on the safe side, I'll leave these two tracks locked. I'll then go forward, say here. Let's say maybe we don't want the title to start right at the beginning. So maybe a little forward, say here. And I want the title to start here. With that, I'll just go and click somewhere near the bottom left corner here. Then we can just add the title. So I'll just go and type in Amanda Foister, that's her surname. And then I'll press enter to create a line break. And she's the director of the charity. So I'll just type in charity director, like that. I missed a space bar there. So I'll just select this and hit space. There we go. Let's then switch back to our selection tool. I can then reposition this anywhere I like. Although you can place this anywhere you like, it's usually near the bottom left corner of the screen. That's why it's called a lower third. And usually you sit this text inside what's called the title safe area. Let me show you what that is. Now, if you go and right click anywhere on the picture and then come down to here where it says safe margins, or you could also click on this ranch here and then click on safe margins here. This will bring up these safe margins. Now, you see two rectangles, two frames. The one on the outside is called the action safe margin. The one on the inside is called the title safe margin. That's 10% from all edges, and that's 20% from all edges. These margins used to be more important and useful in the old days when the HD monitors weren't around. In those days, you need to make sure that anything that's important would sit within this action safe area, so the outer rectangle, and any text would sit within the inner rectangle here, the title safe area because everything that would be left outside the action safe here would be cropped out. You can think of this almost like the bleed area in print, if you're familiar with that. And you'd leave yourself some headroom before the titles were visible. So you'd place the titles inside the title safe area. Now, although nothing gets cropped out anymore with the HD monitors or the internet, we still have this convention of sticking the text inside the title safe area here. So it makes sure that the text doesn't go outside the title safe area. You don't have to stick to this rule, but it's just a convention that the video editors stick to now. Now, I'm going to place this just in the corner of the title safe area. So I can see the C here and the A start at the title safe area. And then the others are still inside the title safe here. But one big problem with this is that it's quite difficult to read the text because of the color. Now, let's see what we can do about that. The color of the text or the appearance, including the font, drop shadow and everything, is actually coming from the previous text that we created. So Premiere remembers the last time you used this type tool to keep things a bit more uniform. In this case, we don't want the text to be like this. So I'm going to need to open up my Essential Graphics panel, making sure that the text is highlighted here. I'll then go to Edit, select the text here as well. And then I'll just go and change this so that it's no longer bold. Let's say it's regular. And I want to delete the shadow as well, like that, which makes it even more difficult to read. If you look at the names here, it's almost impossible to read what it says. Now, instead of using drop shadow, which sometimes is a good trick, so it makes things a bit more legible, like that. Instead of that, let's say you want to have a rectangle that goes behind the text. Well, that's exactly what I'm going to create now. So, you don't create a new element for the rectangle like we did for the background color mat. Instead, what we're going to do is to add a rectangle element inside this graphic here. So, on the right-hand side, I'll go to where it says Edit, and then click on this folded paper icon that will let me create any of these, so I can create more text, I can create vertical text, an ellipse, a rectangle, or I can add an element from a file, like a logo or something else. I'll select the rectangle here, and the rectangle gets created. So you can resize it by clicking on any corner and then just dragging out, like that. I'll place the rectangle in front of the text here, and you see the rectangle actually covers the text. 
That's because I created the rectangle after I created the text, but I can swap them around. So this shape here is our rectangle. I can click and drag this underneath the text, so it's no longer in front of the text, but it's behind it. I'll now go and make this even bigger, and maybe even bigger, like that. I actually want this to go all the way to the left, so it's outside the screen to start with. Let's say, like that. And then to change the appearance of this, let's say I want this to be the same color as her shirt again, I can click on this fill, either pick a color manually by selecting this chip, and then picking a color here, or if I cancel this, I can use the eyedropper here, and then click on her shirt, let's say maybe a dark area like this, and it makes this the same color as her shirt. And if you want to see through the rectangle, so you don't want the rectangle to cover what's behind, you can come down here to where it says 100%, this is the opacity of the rectangle, if I then push this slider towards left, you see I'm making that rectangle more translucent. So the further left you go, the more transparent or translucent it becomes. When it's at zero, that means it's completely transparent. The further right you go, the more opaque it becomes, like that. If you want to be precise with this, you can click here and type in a number. So I'm going to set this to 80%. And the other thing you can do with this is to set this to be a gradient. So it's not a single color, but it goes from one color or one shade of a color to a different shade. So in this case, if I click on this color chip here, where it says fill, near the top left corner, you see it will say solid. If I change it from a solid to a linear gradient, it now brings up this gradient picker here. Now, right now, it's going from blue to white. If I hit OK, you see that's exactly what's happening. So it's going from blue on the left to white on the right. Let's go ahead and change that. I'll click back on the fill chip and then move this out of the way. I want this to go from blue so let's say black. So I'm going to click on this color stop here. And it shows me what the color is. I'm going to click and drag this to let's say black. And then when I press OK, it will now go from blue to black. If I make this 100% again, you see exactly that. So it goes from blue to black. You can also change the size or the distance from where the blue starts to the black. You see these two dots here? That's your gradient editor. If I click on this one, this is the black one, and if I push this towards right, you see I'm changing where the black is, so I'm pushing the black all the way out. Or if I push this in, you see it will make the transition from blue to black a little more abrupt. So the closer these two dots to each other, the more abrupt the shift from one color to the next will be. The farther apart they are from each other, like that, the more gradual that shift will be. I actually quite like that, so I'll leave this as it is. Hey, it's me. Are you finding this video helpful? If you are, please subscribe to our channel so you can get more content like this. And I'll give you another reason why that's a good idea at the end of the video. For now, let's continue. It's also possible to add more colors to the gradient. So if I go and click on this, I can go and click anywhere here on this gray line. Let's say if I click here, that adds a new stop. And if I click on the stop, I can go and give this a different color. I'll just do this for the sake of argument now. So I'll just go and make this green. If I now press OK, it will now go from blue to green to black. If I push the black back in, you see it goes from blue to green to black. I don't quite like that, so I'll undo that. So Command Z a few times. And I think I'll stick to this now. Now what I also want to do is to change the size of the second line of text here. So with my selection tool selected, I'll go and click on the text again on the right. Then I'll double click, so I can highlight just that line, and then I'll make this a little smaller, let's say like that. And because I've highlighted it, it only drops the size of the text where it's highlighted. Let's say I want this to be set to 90. I'll then go back to my selection tool, and now I want the text and the rectangle to be aligned. So I have the text selected already. I'm gonna hold down the Shift key and then click on the rectangle, so that's also selected. Then I can come up here to where it says Align and Transform, and I'll align them vertically. So the text is exactly in the center of that rectangle. So if I now click outside, I think the rectangle now is a little too thick. So I'll select it again, and then make it slightly thinner from the top and the bottom. And then I'll do the same again. So I'll highlight both of these. This time, instead of using the Shift key, I can actually highlight them like that. Then I'll align them again. There we go. And now that we had the text in there, we can actually treat this like any other video clip. So if I click outside, 
you see the text sits there for as long as this clip is visible in the timeline. So it will only start at that point, like that. And then it will finish after this cutaway starts, which doesn't look very nice. So I'll just go back and make sure that the text finishes before the cutaway, say here. So now if I play, you see the text will disappear, then the clip disappears. But I don't want the text to appear or disappear like that. I actually want to give them some transitions as well. So I'm going to go to my effects panel, which I can't see here anymore. So I'll just go to window, effects. And it popped up here, so I'm just going to dock this back to where it was before. So I'll just go click on the name effects and then just push it down here and let go. Then in video transitions, I'll go and apply, let's say, the cross dissolve to the beginning. You see now, it will just fade the text in. Now, let me undo that once. I can add the cross dissolve to the end, but to the beginning, I can add the wipe. So if I come down, find wipe here, drag this to the beginning of the clip and let go. And now you see that the text will wipe on like that. If I play this in real time, this is what it's going to look like. If you wanted this to be slower, all you have to do is to make this transition longer. So if I select the transition, zoom in a little bit by pressing the plus key on the keyboard. If I make this a little longer, like that, that's just going to slow down the transition. So if I play, this is what it's going to look like now. And that's how you can create a lower third title. Before you go, if you want to enter our weekly prize draw where you could win a free training course that's fully live and interactive and worth over $1,000, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications. That's all you have to do. Thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one.